Hello, loved ones. How are you doing today? Welcome, new subscribers, and thank you, subscribers, for following and sharing our videos. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I appreciate all your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart, and I'm here again with a wonderful book review. I couldn't wait to give this book review, you guys. I mean, oh, this book is awesome. Uh, I couldn't wait to come here and give a review on it. I, I'm it's just as excited about it uh, as I was about Ancestral Karma by Stephen Farmer and the other book by uh, Daniel Four, Ancestral Medicine. This book, oh my God, was so on target. I do recommend it. It's Honoring Your Ancestors, The Guide to Ancestral Veneration by Mallory Vados. Very, very, very good book. Brilliantly written. Like, I love this book. Uh, the book, I think I got this book from Amazon. That's usually where I get most of my books. Uh, the book is uh, over, what, 207 pages. 207 pages and 11 chapters. Really good book. You're not, look... If you're beginning and doing ancestral worship, uh, ancestral veneration, get this book because it's a guide from A to Z what you need to do to set up your altar and everything to get your practices jumping off. This If you already have your ancestor altar up and you want to do more work and, uh, with your ancestors, hey, get this book. This is a how-to book with ancestors. That's what I love with this book because she focused mainly on the ancestors and how to work with them in your everyday life. Uh, it's all broken down for you. That's what I like about this book. So I'm going to read the introduction and I'm going to try not to keep you guys long, but I love this book so much. It's so brilliantly written. Uh, I like. I wish I would have got this book, had this book when I first set up my altar. That's just how awesome it is. And the other books I've read uh, on Ancestors Veneration, she has some of, some of the same remedies and stuff in here as well. But she goes into more detail and she talks about her experiences, which I, can, which I resonate with because I'm going through some of those experiences right now. So like I said, oh, 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 I love this book. I love this book. So let me get started. Um... I love all my books, though. I really do. I love all my books. Um, the first one is the uh, what I'm going to get into is the, the introduction. And I'm going to skip around with some things I thought were, were really important to me that resonated with me uh, that might resonate with you. Just to give you a, a brief summary of the book, just read some things in here. Uh, this is the introduction, which is on page one. Ancestor veneration has become a hot topic in recent years. People across a wide range of spiritual traditions, including witchcraft, paganism, seem to be rediscovering the rituals aimed at ancestors instead of gods. Meanwhile, practitioners of the older traditions, including African dysphoric traditions and traditions practiced by indigenous peoples, have been honoring their ancestors through ritual for hundreds of years. Because it... Because I reside in diverse New York City, I've had the privilege of hearing from people from many spiritual circles, all of whom seem to agree on one thing. First, honor your ancestors. But what does that mean? And how do you do it? If you come from a spiritual lineage that has incorporated ancestor veneration into its body of practices, your godparent or initiator will tell you how. But maybe you don't have the benefit of a teacher. Maybe you are still seeking your path. Or maybe you have found that following a, an elected path suits you better than someone else's teaching. Even if those statements apply to you, you can still have a deep, fulfilling ancestor veneration practice. I wrote this book to show that ancestor veneration is for everyone. Okay, 
Ancestor veneration can refer to any ritual or spiritual practice that reconnects you with the people who came before. Doing genealogical research, cooking your grandmother's favorite recipe, learning the folk music and dance from your cultural background. And speaking to the dead in your dreams are all examples of ancestral veneration. Ancestor veneration practices can be secular, magical, or both. They complement a wide variety of spiritual paths. We see examples of ancestor veneration occurring in cultures around the world. The Hungry Ghost Festival, celebrated by Buddhists and Taoists in several Asian countries, in includes offering for the dead such as food, joss paper, which is ancestor money, and chants. The Igun Igun, the Igun Gun masquerades give ancestors a physical form in Yoruba land and Brazil. Sangoma diviners in South Africa prescribe spiritual healings according to the wisdom of the ancestors and the Catholics around the world honor their ancestors on All Souls Day, often incorporating pagan customs into the nominally Christian holiday. Ultimately, your ancestor veneration practice is your own. You are already the high priest or high priestess of this religion. And that's interesting because when I've been get, uh, doing my ancestors reading and asking them questions and asking them about my spiritual progress and working with them, the high priestess always comes up. It was coming up. And then when I read this, I was like, oh, that's what you were telling me, ancestors. So it's something how the synchronicity, when you start dealing with your ancestor, you start seeing all the synchronicities on how they, they give you messages. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. That means you have the freedom and the responsibility to honor your ancestors in a way that works for both you and them. Even if you are learning how to serve your ancestors according to the ways of the traditional lineage, there are still opportunities for developing your personal relationship with your own ancestors. This book will provide inspiration for doing so. As you go deeper into your ancestor veneration practices, you will see substantial benefits in your mundane life and magical pursuits. Think of your existence as an incarnate being, as a garden. Anything you want to manifest in this lifetime is a plant. Jobs are plants. Special vacations are plants. Lovers are plants. Children are plants. Creative projects are plants. Your ancestors are soil. The weather and the water that nurture the growth of the garden. For any plant to take root and bear fruit, it needs to be supported by the ancestors. It must be compatible with their soil and climate and nourished by their sunshine and water. But once you understand how to tend to your garden properly, there's nothing you need to do to do to will a plant to grow. Just as Mother Nature, it ultimately, it ultimately what causes plants to grow. The ancestors increase blessings in your in our lives, and they certainly do. Since I've been, you know, healing and doing all the work, my blessings have increased in my life. So, yes, it does, you know, establish that relationship because you definitely need spiritual allies in this world. You will also find as your ancestor veneration practice flourishes that you have access to a new perspective. At first, this will seem like a greater self-knowledge, and it sure do. Oh, my gosh. That is a better understanding of who you are, but then it will expand into conscious awareness that transcends your lifetime, what you think of as yourself. And it's basically, oh my gosh, and she hits that, I resonated with that because it does explain like your wisdom and understanding grows. You become more enlightened and you understand the relationship between the ancestors and yourself or between the ancestors and the living. You understand how deeply connected that they are once you start uh, your ancestral veneration. The story that begins with our first breath ends with our last is just one chapter in much of a longer in a much longer narrative. Understanding ourselves 
in context of this narrative heals one of the most fundamental wounds that our culture inflicts on us, the myth that we are alone and without history. That was just in the introduction. So she comes right off the bat, uh, you know, she comes right out letting you know what the an your ancestral vener veneration is all about. Uh, let me go to another chapter, which is my favorite one. And you guys know this is my favorite thing, you know. And she hit on some strong topics in this chapter. The second chapter I'm going to read is Healing Ancestral Trauma on page 29. Uh, I thought what she said was very, very powerful. Gosh. I hope I don't keep you, you guys long with this because this book is so uh, informative. It's so insightful. It is so enlightening. Uh, it's a really, uh, I, it really is helpful. I'm going to keep this book. This would be a go-to, my first go-to book. Uh, if, if I was, you know, when I'm working with my ancestors. Everyone has ancestor trauma. It doesn't matter what kind of privilege or oppression you experience in this time. You have ancestors who experience trauma. I've been telling you guys that. I talk, you know, you guys hear me talk about healing in the Know Thyself course. And, yeah, you can get caught up in the hype or want to do magic and all this other stuff. But we really won't evolve and make it to the place that we need to be if we don't do the healing. The healing journey and your spiritual journey is not different. It is one and the same. I can't emphasize that enough to you guys. Okay? Including its most extreme manifestation which is war, slavery, genocide, and things we cannot even imagine. Trauma is psychic damage, okay? Because that's why that shadow work is good, too. If you're doing that shadow work, you're going to be able to see where the trauma is. You'll hear that often, shadow work, do the shadow work. That's how you level up spiritually. You'll hear that. That's what that shadow work and all that's about. And we go through that in the Know Thyself program. We do a whole genealogy tree. We have you doing the shadow work. We have you working on any trauma that you have experienced, no matter how little or small, a big or small you think it is. Okay? Uh, it can occur on the result of a single severely disturbing event, or it can be caused by a moderately upsetting event that are reoccurred regularly over a period of time. Many of us are already familiar with psychological symptoms of trauma, which include complex feelings such as anxiety. I deal with a lot of anxiety from the residual effects of trauma. Depression, denial. Denial is the big thing. That is the main major thing because a lot of people think there is nothing absolutely wrong with them, that they're perfectly fine. They don't question their thinking. They don't question their behavior. They don't question their emotions. So that's one of the first things we deal with in the Know Thyself course is turn down the denial. Once you turn down the denial, you start doing the heavy lifting and doing the big changes in yourself. And mental confusion. There are also physical symptoms associated with trauma. Insomnia. I experienced insomnia. Uh, fatigue. Physical pain. And muscle tension. I deal with muscle tension too. Uh, the line we perceive between the psychological and the physical is blurry at best. At this point, I feel it's important to recognize that ancestor veneration is not a substitute for good mental and physical health care. However, it can, in partnership with good care, to assist in healing your inherited trauma. Healing often requires a multi-modality approach. We tend to think of trauma as isolated to an individual, a distressing event ha event happens, and the individual who experienced it has trauma. But trauma can be transgenerational too. Now, I would like to um, inject right here, and this is very true. I was watching a documentary. Uh, this lady, she witnessed, uh, she found her mom's her mom dead. Somebody had murdered her mom. And do you know, I think she was like four or five. And do you know, like 27, 30 years later, she was killed the same way 
and her son found her just like she found her mom. And, and you see, and that trauma just repeated itself. And when we don't, we don't educate ourselves or not educated about trauma, you will repeat those patterns. You will repeat them. You know, uh, if you, you know, you're, if you're not working on it, you're bound to repeat it. So that's why that's important. New evidence suggests a biological basis for symptoms of trauma that can be passed from parent to child, even if you never met your parents. So she, you know, there is something it can be passed down. And I was talking to a relative about that. Um, I think it's been a month or so ago. I was talking to her about it. You may still inherit their ancestral trauma. Okay. Unresolved trauma, whether it originates in your ancestral line or your personal lifetime, plays out in your unconscious behaviors. See, and sometimes we'll try to justify why we did something. Excuse me, but if we take a deeper look, we're doing it because of some trauma that we have experienced or the trauma that uh, your ancestral lineage experienced and now is playing out in the family. This can include addictions, sleep disorders, and destructive patterns in intimate relationships. There is no one-size-fits-all solutions to resolving trauma. Gradually, we become aware of the patterns in your. Gradually, we become. Gradually, becoming aware of the patterns in your life and relationships is often the first step toward healing. The truth is, we can't really hide trauma, and ignoring it doesn't make it disappear. Some of the ancestors in our lines may have tried to do this out of love, thinking that they could spare their children the suffering they had known if they stayed silent. But fortunately or unfortunately, our bodies remember what minds forget. We still end up haunted by the past, even when no one tells us about it. And you see that now going on with the protests, uh, still fighting for minorities, you still wars. You still seeing that play out, okay? Because nobody is dealing with the trauma, all right. So I thought that was very informative and very insightful uh, when she talked about uh, trauma. I have another thing marked here. This is chapter eight, page one thirty one. I thought this chapter was very, very informative, uh, especially when it comes to going deeper with mediumship. That's the name of this um, chapter, going deeper with med mediumship when you're trying to establish communication with the ancestors. As you evaluate the messages you receive through mediumship, ask yourself, how does this make me feel? Does it make me, does, does it make you feel wrong in your body or is it painful, but it makes you feel excited to be alive? Does it erode, erode or restore your faith in the world? And perhaps most importantly, does it make you feel alienated or move toward connecting with your friends and family? After integration, the discernment of spirits is most fundamental skill we can learn to order in order to get the most out of our communi communion with our ancestors. But some people, particularly professional mediums, diviners, and magical professionals, may wish to learn more advanced techniques for validating and adding concrete specificity to messages that they receive from ancestors. I think that's where I'm going with this because I'm even thinking about taking a mediumship ancestor class. Like I get messages from ancestors, but I, be, I want to be more specific with it. Uh, and she talks a little bit, like she's saying, talking a little bit here about it. These people may look to divination, and I use divination. Uh, it's helped me be precise at, at many things, but I need, I want to work on it even more. I, I get messages from spirit, but messages from spirit is not like from me and you talking like right now. It's not like that. You get little messages in little increments. And then you'll have these moments of, uh, I call them aha moments, where you could be busy doing something and then 
a awareness. You have an aha moment. The epiphany comes, you know. That's how it's been for me. Uh, divination as a way to back up their mediumship. And I certainly do me uh, do that. I'll receive a message in meditation from the ancestors. And then I'll do a reading on it. And usually my reading lines up with what they show me in meditation. So maybe I am... Um, maybe I am more uh, fluent in it than I think, you know, um, because the ancestors are teaching me and most of, you know, because I've been reading for over 20 years now. So uh, maybe I've come so accustomed to it, I don't realize that I'm doing it, you know. Some religious and magical traditions have specific divination tools used to clarify messages from the dead. For example, practitioners of Osha, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, also called Lakumi and Santeria may speak to their ancestors through Obi divination in Yoruba land. This is done using kola nuts. In Latin America and Caribbean, it is done using four pieces of coconut. The coconut pieces are thrown, interpreted based on how many land facing up or down. The result is binary, yes or no response, with some qualifications about how much work must be done in order to achieve the desired result. When a bad omen is revealed in a result of a throw, the diviner must take immediate action to remedy the situation. And then she talks about using uh, regular playing cards as well. Uh, if you don't know that system, she goes on to teaching you how to use playing cards to uh, communicate with your ancestors. I got one more thing to read and then I'm going to close out. I didn't want to make this too long for you guys, but I definitely want to share the good stuff with you. So uh, here I go. This chapter that I'm reading out of, I think is um, calling on the power of your ancestors. Yeah, it is calling on the ancestral power. Chapter 10, page 174, performing ancestral magic. Uh, I thought this was really good. As far as I know, ancestral ma magic isn't an official category or tradition. Yet magic can be done by calling upon the power of the ancestors. Some people like to call upon pagan gods and goddesses when they are doing magic. Who do root workers and other Amer American folk ma magicians will often call upon the power of Christian God. When I do magic, I prefer to call upon the power of my blood ancestors, the saints I am devoted to, and my spirit guides. In the, in the next chapter, I will show you examples of how you can call upon the power of your own ancestral help and spirits to create positive changes in your life. Often, the heart of ancestral magic consists of petitioning your ancestors formally for a desired outcome and making offerings to them before before and after the petition is granted. According to the principles you learn in chapter 4, as such, you'll notice that most of the magic takes place in your home before your ancestor altar, depending on where your ancestor altar, uh, depending on where your ancestors are interred. You may also wish to perform some of these rites in that location. I leave that up to you for, I leave that up to your discretion. You'll also want to incorporate words and symbols that they understand as much as possible. These can be drawn from a cultural heritage, your family's tradition, and your unique personal relationship with your ancestors. Okay, so, you know, I'm just reading little, little snippets of this. So, like I said, this is a really good book. The author, I think she did a wonderful job, a wonderful job in writing this book. She also talks about spiritual baths, how to stay uh, clean as well of negativity. I mean, this is a, this book is full of like it's a how-to, go-to book. 
you know, I do recommend it. So if you're just starting your ancestor veneration, you want to know more about honoring the ancestors in details, you know, step by step, you know, this is the book because she focused, you know, precisely on that. Now, I hope this book, uh, this book review has been insightful, very informative, informative and enlightening to you. Uh, I also want to make an announcement that I was thinking about doing a strawberry full moon re reading Friday at 8.30 Central Standard Time. Um, so it's going to be a live reading. So, you know, please come on in and get a live free reading. Get a live free reading with me. I'll probably be posting posting uh, that right after I post this video. So again, thank you, loved ones, for being here. I appreciate all your support. Uh, and I hope this video, uh, this book, this book review on book review uh, was very helpful for you. Okay. So you guys take care. I'll see you real soon. You'll see me Friday. Light and love. Namaste. I shay, loved ones. May the ancestors be with you.